Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, today we're gonna make some masaman curry. So one of the, you know, one of the famous Thai curries, masaman curry. So this is, this one is a, um, masaman is a, is like a fusion, you know, dish. It's, it's got Thai ingredients like the, you know, the fresh aromatics, um, like the lemongrass and the chilies and, and such. Uh, but it's also got some, um, ingredients from uh, Persia and from India, uh, so dry spices and such. Um, and typically made with uh, you know, chicken, often made with beef. I'm making it with beef today because I had this big beef check. Um, all right, so I got a can of coconut milk, full fat coconut milk. And what you want to do is don't shake that can before you open it. Um, what you want is the natural sort of separation of the fat of the cream and the milk underneath. Um, and so we want to try and get most of that cream off and you'll see there's a very distinct layer. So that cream is mainly, you know, emulsified, whipped kind of fat with some amount of liquid in there. There's some amount of water-based liquid in there. Um, but what we want to do now is evaporate that water-based liquid off until the fat breaks. All right, and then we're gonna use that fat to fry our ingredients in. So masaman curry, the other ingredients, very simple. Um, all right, I've got some beef chuck here. You can use uh, chicken, you know, chicken legs are, are great. Um, the vegetables are onion and potatoes. I'm using a sweet potato as well because I had it and I kind of like how it works out. Um, co coconut milk, I'm only gonna use one can. Uh, curry paste, uh, so jarred curry pastes are generally just fine. I'm using uh, Masary brand uh, masaman curry paste. Uh, fish sauce. Palm sugar, uh, I got some tamarind in the fridge I'm gonna use. Um, if you don't have tamarind, you can use you know lime juice, something like that, and uh, peanuts. Uh, and uh, taxi, of course a taxi, very important. All right, so I'm gonna cut my meat into chunks here. I like to keep my meat pretty thick and chunky, so I'm not even gonna split it in half. You know, width-wise, it's probably like two inches wide there. I'll cut this into a few long strips. And you know, differing recipes, some recipes will call for browning the meat first. Um, other, other recipes just call for kind of cooking the meat a little bit in the curry paste and then adding the coconut milk. I find you get plenty of depth of flavor even without, without sort of any deep browning of the meat first. So I generally do not bother browning. All right, so you can see, just like when you're browning butter, what's gonna happen is eventually all the liquid, all the water-based liquid is gonna cook out of there. And you're going to see the solids start to brown. And it'll start getting a sort of really nice nutty, nutty aroma to it. I'm going to have my curry paste ready. So if you do want to make, make your own muscle on curry paste at home, uh, you can. And again, Pylin has a wonderful recipe for it, which I will uh, probably forget to link to. But check down below. It might be there. All right. We're getting a little bit brown down there. I'm going to add my curry paste. What is this, like four ounces maybe? Yeah, four ounces of curry paste. Mm, love that smell. All right, so my curry paste is frying. I can smell it toasting. Looking for that aroma to kind of develop a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with my meat. We're gonna stir it around to coat it in this paste. So we're not looking to really brown the meat too much here. You know, a lot of the reason why in you know in Western cuisine you brown meats deeply, you know, and frequently. So one of the generally one of the steps in a lot of Western dishes is to brown meats. Um, and so you know the reason you do that is you build up those kind of umami. Maillard reaction, you know, caramelized brown flavors uh, by by deep searing like that. Whereas in a lot of sort of um, Asian dishes, uh, you get those those umami flavors more from fermented sauces, so things like fish sauce, soy sauce, um, shrimp pastes, 
as opposed to necessarily really deep brown searing, which is not to say the searing doesn't exist, but it's just not as common a step in recipes as it is, uh, you know, it doesn't have the huge emphasis placed on it like it does in Western cuisine. All right, so our meat is kind of coated in all that stuff. I'm gonna add in the rest of my coconut milk here. And I'm gonna use some water too. Get the rest of the coconut milk out of there. You could do this with, with stock if you want, you know, if you have a, a good stock, but I'm just gonna do it in coconut milk and water. Let that curry paste kind of flavor it. All right, and so now I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. I'll bring it up to, you know, the recipes always say bring to a boil, then reduce to a simmer. Um, the, the main reason you do that is just to make sure that people uh, do bring, bring it up to a proper simmer. Um, but really, you just need to bring it up to a simmer. You don't need to bring it up to a boil first. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to bring this up to a simmer. Uh, and then I'm going to let it simmer on top of here until the meat is almost tender. I'm looking for it to be, you know, probably half an hour away from finishing. Uh, and then I'm going to add the rest of my vegetables. All right, so uh, that's all I'm going to do. So I will see you back here in about few minutes. All right, so I'm gonna add, mention a couple things I'm gonna do. First of all, I am gonna set this down to a simmer. Sort of a bare simmer is what I'm looking for. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add some shrimp paste um, because if I was making that that um, curry paste from scratch, I would make it with uh, shrimp paste, uh, but the jarred stuff doesn't typically have it. So I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons. Shrimp paste to there. Shrimp paste is one of these things that smells really funky, but tastes really delicious once it's mixed into, thing, in, mixed into things. All right. Um, so the other things that I am going to do while this is cooking, um, I'm going to mostly cover it. So I'll have the lid on about here. Um, and then I'm going to check it every once in a while to make sure that it isn't, um, uh, that, that the meat is mostly covered. It's sticking up a little bit here and there is okay, you know, um, but... <clears throat> But you do want it to be mostly covered. Um, the other thing I will also do is if I see an excessive amount of sort of scum, I might just uh, skim, skim the scum. You can skim the fat if you like, if you feel like it. Um, often this dish does have a kind of little layer of fat on it though, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Okay. All right, so that's gonna take uh, a couple of hours until I'm ready to add the vegetables. So now I will see you in multiple hours. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, so I have some explaining to do about where uh, where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, so uh, as, as usual, I, I, I miscalculated um, and I forgot that today was not a normal Friday and that my daughter in fact had a recital today. Uh, and so the beef stew that I started cooking earlier, the masman curry that I started cooking earlier, I wasn't gonna have time to finish it before dinner. Um, so what I did was I simmered the meat for two hours uh, and then I shut it off and I kept it, um, I kept it at 145 degrees, which is a sort of safe temperature to hold things at. And now my kids are asleep. Uh, I had a chamber music rehearsal. Now I'm finally back home and I'm finishing up this stew. So at this point right now, the meat is, um, I, I would say about 30 to 45 minutes away from its, uh, from where we want it to be at the end, you know? Um, so I want the meat to be kind of go undergoing what I call secondary breakdown, um, you know, which is where, uh, the, the, the primary breakdown is when sort of like the really big chunks of fat between the muscle groups start to break down, you know? Um, and so your muscles kind of separate a little bit. Uh, and then secondary breakdown is when the sort of fibrils in between uh, within each muscle group start to tenderize. Um, so, you know, each muscle will still kind of hold its shape, but as you bite into it, um, it'll separate. So it gives you just a little bit of, little bit of chew. And then finally, you know, there's what, what I would call tertiary breakdown, you know, third, third order breakdown, uh, which is when the individual muscle fibrils themselves start to break down. And so that's when you sort of get that kind of frayed look, that kind of chalky flavor of a uh, chalky texture of really overcooked stewed meat. All right, so I'm going in here with some, a 
chunked up onion. Okay. And these potatoes, which I'm also just going to kind of keep chunky. Mm, maybe I won't use that sweet potato. I feel like I feel like this is probably enough. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure that my vegetables are basically covered in liquid. At this point now, I'm going to bring this up to a simmer one more time. Um, you know what? I'm going to do some final seasoning as well. So we'll pull out a little chunk of rock sugar. That's probably enough. You don't have to get it too sweet. You, well, I guess you can get it as sweet or as unsweet as you like. I'm using about this much. And for the rock sugar, I'm just gonna roughly chop it up so that it dissolves just a little bit faster. You can do that in a mortar and pestle. Of course, you can also use something like brown sugar or any kind of raw sugar or, you know, even white sugar is totally fine in this context. A couple tablespoons of uh, fish sauce. And you know what I noticed earlier was that what I thought was tamarind paste, uh, was fresh tamarind in the fridge, was actually uh, guava paste. Um, so I don't have any tamarind, so what I am going to do is uh, grab a... a lemon, which is really the only sort of um, acid ingredient I have. I have, I have some vinegar in w as well, but uh, this is the only sort of, you know, sort of fresh acid that I have in the house right now. Um, but I think it'll work fine. Don't, don't at me. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna bring it to a simmer. Um, I'm gonna cook it just until those potatoes and onions are softened. And then uh, we'll see where we're at, but I think we'll be pretty much done, you know? All right, so I will see you back here in a couple minutes because I forgot I'm also gonna add my peanuts now. So we're gonna add these peanuts in so that they kind of soften and braise in there along with the uh, potatoes and onions, maybe, I don't know, half a cup of peanuts or so. All right, so I'm gonna let that all come to a simmer now. And then we will cook it until everything is tender, which if my uh, calculations are correct, should be at about the exact same time. Uh, and so I will see you back in half an hour or so. Um, all right, so our potatoes are pretty much done. You can tell with a cake tester, you know, no resistance. Um, and I'm gonna pull out a chunk of meat and we'll see where that meat is. Ooh, yeah, that's perfect. So uh, it kind of just holds its shape together, but with just a little bit of a pull, comes apart. That's how you know it's, mm, how you know it's gonna be juicy and toothsome and not sort of um, like chalky and stringy. Mm, yeah, perfect, all right. Muscle on curry typically is not that spicy, you know, so the curry paste itself is not gonna be very hot the way like a green curry would be, for example. This on its own, nine out of 10. This masamon curry with rice, 10 out of 10. Would eat again. Anyhow, we're not eating this today. Uh, this I'm going to now shut off, chill overnight, uh, and then we'll reheat it for dinner tomorrow, at which point it will thicken up a little bit. Um, it looks a little bit loose right now. Um, I think it, it, I think it's fine. You know, it, it's fine for a curry like this to be a little bit loose because you're gonna. It's supposed to be kind of soupy, eaten with a you know a spoon and a fork mixed with rice. Um, but if we leave it till tomorrow, it is going to thicken up a little bit anyway, um, and I think the flavor will improve a touch as well. Uh, it'll kind of all the kind of rough edges will soften up overnight. But anyhow. Uh, that's that. It's delicious, and uh, I hope you make it sometime, and um, I hope you're all having a wonderful evening or day or whatever time of day it is. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.